Perfect. So my name is Natalie and I am with Unicorn Properties. I'm part of Vanessa and Mike's downline and I'm based between Chicago and Mexico. We learn and experience our case study was Mexico three years ago. So we've been studying the market. We understand, you know, how things are playing out, but we always rely on our local agents to make sure, you know, we understand the inventory and we understand nuances within the market. So today we're gonna to talk about Mexico. And let me share my screen. And the reason that I like Mexico so much is because it's less cold, primarily. And let me go here. No, percent from the other region. So let me, I, pres I shared this presentation before with a group of uh, investors that we have, and they really love it. So I'm gonna go straight to the beginning. I don't know why I started from here, but uh, you guys get an idea. So real estate in Mexico. <clears throat> and I don't know if I said again, but I wanted to just mostly share my experiences on how I got started, why I selected this area, you know, between Riviera Maya and Yucatan to, to just kind of share the experience, the, the journey and everything else. So this is the agenda right now. And I am, I've been in Chicago for 20 years. I got bored of the market there for a bit. I did investments in Airbnb, rentals, buildings. So I love real estate and I was doing real estate investments even before I was a real estate agent. The reason I became a real estate agent is because I love EXP model, not only on the agent attraction side, but also on the international side. So my story starts when I wanted to buy a property in Mexico in, in Riviera Maya by Playa del Carmen. And I was really frustrated with the buying process because the agents that I was working with, they didn't understand what I was looking for. Even though I speak Spanish, I feel they didn't understand my requirements. So I got really frustrated on the process. I used three different agents and closed with the last one because everybody was kind of uh, uh, sharing and showing me properties that maybe they had a double listing. They had the listing and they were the buyer's agent. So sometimes they were steer I felt steered into buying something that I didn't want. So in that, you know, in that way, I felt like, hey, maybe there's an opportunity here. We can do, you know, help a little bit, you know, the local agents on understanding how American buyers, American buyers buy property. So I want to share our location right now. So this applies almost 80% to all Mexico. So Emilia is not here, but she covers Puerto Vallarta. We have people in all across Mexico within Banes team. And now we are extending to South America as well with Felipe. And Spain, I think it was covered a while ago, but now we want to go deeper into other locations. But today, let's focus and narrow down into the peninsula Yucatan, which is the one that is closest to Florida. We're like an hour and a half away. So it's super, super close. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because it has the same weather, the same perks, the same hurricanes, but we have um, cheaper prices. Like it's way cheaper for clients. It's easier to, you know, get into... Uh, spending $100,000, $200,000 instead of $600,000, let us say, in Florida for the same type of uh, properties. And when we talk about property taxes, it's like it's, it blows everything out of the water. So um, these are the, this is the agenda for today. And let's get started. Unicorn is a subgroup of um, Mike's and Vanya. You guys know the statistics about EXP. I just share this with everybody else I present too, because we're in 24 countries right now. So at the end of this call, I'll ask you guys which are the countries and to see if you know, um, you know, it's a little quiz for the end. So if you don't know it's here, you can take a screenshot for a cheat sheet later. But um, I took a journey last year and I traveled, I think I hit 10 countries last year and at least eight of them were within EXP. So I have a lot of stories about that, a lot of research, a lot of learnings, and that's how I met Nilesh as well, and Dunia, the managing broker for Dubai. Um, the reason that I go to different countries and explore the real estate there is because first, I love the research, and second, I love to see how other people do real estate in other countries. <clears throat> but with all the real estate sales, I find this, the issue is always the same. When you go international, people, the, the client will always ask you, okay, I would like to buy, but you know, what's the financing like? In the, in the US, you can Google that and you find out like 20 options. In other countries, you don't know what to look for. It's in different languages and you don't understand the local law. Second, the legal part, you know, can I own land there? Do I have to be from that, you know, do I have to present my, my residency? 
do I need a, how do I pay my taxes? What if I buy an investment property? How do I, where do I declare my taxes? In the country or in my country or how does it work? Then we have uh, people that in Mexico is very common that they buy land and they build later. So who can I work with? Who can I trust? So we have built all this network while we've been in Mexico, at least for the Yucatan Peninsula. And we keep going from city to city to make sure we have all this covered if the law changes. Otherwise, the same attorney that can help us in Rivera Maya, sometimes they can help us also in a different state, but that varies. The part of immigration, we have also immigration attorneys that are partners for us. And the content that we create has been really helpful because we've been learning by doing interviews. And you know, when you do podcasts and interviews, people give you the information for free. You don't have to pay an attorney to give you the advice. It's more like, hey, um, Miriam, she's our you know attorney for, for real estate. I'm like, Miriam, I would love to have some questions. Uh, I would love to interview you and you know share your you know you in our channel so you can promote yourself and we can send you referrals. She was happy to do it. We did the interview. She's our right hand now. Same with immigration. So now we have our go-to people that have been feeding us and teaching us information about the market itself, and they're now our partners that we work together with and we trust. Trust is super important in Latin America because, as you know, you know, in the U.S. everything is registered. We have a PIN number, but in other, once you step out of the country, even Dominican Republic, uh, Mexico, Panama, they you have to go through the different steps to find out if this property is actually the you know under the name of the person that is selling. It's very common that in other countries that the same um, asset, the same building, the same land might be sold for, to more than one person, and that's where fraud starts. And the clients, when they hear that, they're like, you know what? In Mexico, there's a bunch of fraud. I don't want to buy there. So that's not true. There's a way to find out how to buy there, how to buy you know, trust with, through, through trusted individuals. And we have do, been doing the research to make sure that's, that's the case. We also have relocation services. We have a partner for that based out of Costa Rica. And they, uh, he does international relocations from, from A to Z. So they don't have to worry about anything. Customs, furniture, cars. What do I do with my cars, my TVs? Do I have to pay custom taxes? He's the, he's the expert. So we have all this network already for Mexico and we're extending it to other countries that applies the same. So this is the idea I would like you to guys keep in mind if you're in a new country to just ask these questions and, and or share with us and we can share with you what we have learned so far. So why Yucatan and why, and then Noah is here from, from Yucatan as well. He's growing so much and so fast. I think we need more agents, but from the agents that we have right now, uh, we've been able to, to work um, a lot of uh, projects, not only on the as an agency, but also as a developer. So now we are developing um, land here. So just so you know a lot about the story of Yucatan and why it's, um, for me, it has a, a different energy is because uh, in theory, the, the meteor hit the earth in Yucatan Peninsula and then it exploded and extended all the dinosaurs. Because of that, we have a lot of cenotes, which are underground caves. And that influences on the real estate because there are certain requirements you need to follow when you are in shallow lands because you know you cannot build too deep, you cannot build too high, and then maybe you cannot kind of have a basement. So things like that are going to change. And um, this is the reason I picked this area to live because I ended up in Playa del Carmen, Riviera Maya, and then came here later on uh, because I really loved the, the area. But just so you know a little story, this is um, Yucatan Peninsula. <clears throat> We are located right here next to Mex uh, next to Miami, like Miami's over here. And we cover from Cancun to Tulum. If you have heard about Tulum, we have agents almost in every in every spot, Cancun, Playa, Tulum, and Merida. These are the most popular cities. And the difference between Merida and Playa is like in Tulum, you will buy at prices that are New York, New York prices. So they're very expensive, they're on top of the market. Yes, it's very nice, but the client might not have too much appreciation when they buy, let's say for 200,000, maybe it goes to 210. In Merida, if you buy something, probably your, your average will be like 50,000 for land and up to maybe 160 for a whole house. But the appreciation here is just much higher because this, this is a developing city and it's happening. So the reason we pick this city is because it's growing, it's not stagnant. Riviera Maya is stagnant because it sells itself. It's easy to it's easy to sell there. But Merida takes a little more effort, but because of that, there's so much more potential. So that's why we selected this as our home. And I, I'm going to be here for the rest of the year to make sure that you know we can grow this market and we can support the agents in the area, as well as selling as well. So the Cenotes Underground Caves, this is uh, how a cenote looks like. 
And this, this influences real estate construction because these are everywhere. So when the meteor hits the earth, it bubbles the, the earth and the water and the fire, and it is solidified in little caves underground. So that's why we have this kind of view anywhere in very, in almost everywhere within the Yucatan Peninsula. And this is important when it comes to construction. And for example, let me share why this is an area that is so, you know, let's say people come here on their own. We don't have to like, you know, have people come over here because they already come for the vacation lifestyle and everything. So we have about 30 million people coming uh, year over year. Uh, at least I was recorded in 2022. And this is the Cancun uh, stats. Um, so with 500 flights a day, they come from all over the world here. And then they, they start traveling, you know, down to Tulum and over to Merida. And then they start discovering a little lifestyle that could have been like something that they see in Miami. And it's in Mexico. So it's kind of like, what am I? So the lifestyle here is very rich. It's very, it's very nice. It's safe. And we have one of the busiest, um, you know, airports in Mexico. A little bit about Tulum and just, you know, we're covering the whole Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, Tulum right now just launched the airport, which is what is raising the um, the property value. So, you know, anytime that there is something like train, highway, airport, the, the value of in this area rises. And this is has been happening year over year for the last three years. And now it's done. Finally, they finished the airport, which is something we take for granted in the US. You know, it's an airport. I mean, it's been there for years. This one is new and it's so important because when I, you know, relocate traffic from Cancun to Tulum and they can go straight to their homes here. And this area is very, very popular and dense and there's a lot of developments here. But as I mentioned, Tulum is awesome. Just the prices are like a little more stagnant. So it depends what your client wants. If they want lifestyle, they want beach and they want like a jungle feel, Tulum is perfect. And But if they want growth of their money, they want an investment property, we suggest Merida and Yucatan up, and up above is a little bit better if they want an investment that is going to grow. So we're, we're following the trends for the last three years. So this is kind of the conclusion we came um, about. That's why we're you know here right now. Uh, these are the cities that they fly to Tulum right now on the airlines. And sometimes if, if you feel like when I'm in the US, I feel like we have everything we don't need and we have no challenges. I mean, like, oh, airport is there. But here it's like, we're so excited for these little things. It's, it's like something that we're like, you know, celebrating because the value of the land that we're, you know, offering our clients is actually growing. Um, this is the Maya train. Have you, I don't know if you guys heard about the Maya train, but the reason that it's important is because all the routes and around the area, the value just went up. You know, I think we have, we have lots for sale that were about maybe 20,000 in, in the, you know, in the jungle. And once they set up the train, that value went almost to double within three years. So if the client was looking for an investment property, um, this was kind of like, if you knew where the route was, your client just, you know, got a very good deal next to the, um, uh, the, the train tracks, but it's still in the jungle. So this is super important because now Cancun is connected to Merida. And this is, this is really key when it comes to commerce and tourists, um, because now we're connected with the main cities in the peninsula. Uh, this launched on um, two months ago, and they're still finishing the, the stations, which again, might seem like very, you know, like a simple task, but it's a huge task for the government right now to finish this and actually launch it. Because in South America, I'm originally from Peru, nothing gets done. <laughs> so we're always hoping and wishing for, you know, one day, but now it's done. So Mexico has done a great job to actually, you know, finish these um, projects that they have. So what is the lifestyle and investment? This is a Tulum style lifestyle. Houses like these uh, are very much in the, like jungle feel. Uh, and then, but the finishes are, it depends on each architect, but the finishes are so cute, so rich and so eco-friendly. Uh, people love to live here because then you're in contact with nature. You are, you know, one hour and a half from Miami. If you have an emergency, you can go back to the U.S. right away. Uh, it's not like you're stuck somewhere. But this is the lifestyle that we we have here, and Merida is adopting similar a similar look and feel as well for the look um, for how they're building houses now. Um, types of properties. I want to share just because it's um it's a uh, very standard, like in the U.S. Same. We have pre-built, you know, pre-construction. Uh, they do it for you. You wait. Usually, you get up and running like a year and a half, 
uh, the sales start and then they get built and then they get delivered um, in about one to two years. That can be a little bit risky for some investors if they don't want to you know, invest money or tie up a down payment, uh, but it's the best way to buy for a discount. So maybe at least you can catch the value of the property at 30% less than if you buy a finished property. And the difference between the pre-construction um, and the finished product is the price and the payment options that you get. In pre, when it's pre-built before it gets built, you will get a discount, not only discount, but you can get payment plans to pay it off within the next um, one to three years. So this is super important because a client doesn't have you know, $200,000 laying on the bank, chilling there, it's more like they wanna invest wisely. So this kind of gives them the time to pay either in you know initially in balloon payments at the end or they can do monthly and then it's not that expensive so you can kind of pay it off in a set amount of years. And the developer, don't, they don't charge you uh, interest. So they don't charge you any interest until you until the, the product is finished. And then at that point, they will add interest at you know whatever is remaining, or they will um you can connect with a bank there for financing. Only the banks only finance when the product is finished. I'll I'll explain more about finance in the next slide. But then of course we have the built uh, houses, condos, villas that are ready to go, their title, they have been they had a prior owner or they're owned by the developer. Um, these ones are, we have a lot of listings like that as well that are finished when clients just want to go and buy it off. But usually the market here is cash. So keep that in mind because it might be, you know, you have to, it can be anywhere from 150000 to 400000 but it will be probably cash. So you have to have a deal with the person, the seller. Of course, we have lots and uh, land available. Uh, something I want to mention that if you haven't heard or if you don't know about Ejidal is a term that it's land from from the from a community. So many buyers come to Mexico and they get excited and they're like, oh, this is for sale, this is for sale, or this is for sale. But then when they go and actually do the homework for the title, if that land is Ejidal, an international buyer cannot buy that, like ever. You have to be a Mexican citizen to be able to be part of an Ejidal land. And this is what the government did a long, long time ago when um, after they after independence, they kind of like share, uh, and I don't have the facts on the history, but they share the land among the citizens so they can actually farm the land. So it's not like abandoned. And that belongs to a group of people that doesn't have one owner and it's no private property. So if you hear Ejidal anywhere in Mexico, run, <laughs> don't buy it, don't have your clients buy it. But there is a process to be followed that might take a couple of years that this can become Ejidal to private property. But that's not something I can do. I had to get an attorney. I had to go to the city. And there's a few steps to follow and calculate it maybe a year or two or three to get this one sorted out. If your client bought Ejidal, they might be in trouble if they're international. If they don't have a passport from Mexico, Ejidal cannot be bought. Of course, we have gated communities and their lands. So they build a whole community and they just sell the lots. Everybody can build on their own pace, on their own style. People love this one because you can do your own house your own way. And it's like you have a white canvas. Of course, they have to follow some guidelines if you're a gated community. But if it's open land, sometimes you have commercial and, and, and residential in the same lot. It can be mixed use. Also, there is also constant construction. You can hire an architect, a, a construction company, and they can do it for you. And this is what I'm doing right now. I have a land in Tulum. And I went as far as right now, we have our rent, you know, the renders for the house. And it's going to be a seven bedroom house with two villas. So I love it because here, there's not that many codes and requirements. And you know they don't restrict you as much. You can be artistic. You can do whatever house you want in any shape or form. As long as you meet some guidelines and the height, you can go crazy with it. You can do like uh, a glass house or you can do like a jungle house. It's up to you. Like nobody tells you what to do with your house. And that's what I love the most because then I can create like whatever layout I want, whatever look I want. You fence it and, and you're good. So this is what I'm doing right now in Tulum. It's my personal project. But I, I mean, I'm learning by doing it because I think unless you actually... <laughs> practice where you teach your clients. I mean, you have to do it yourself or anywhere you are in, you know, in Denver, in Vegas, to make sure that um, they have this, uh, you know, look and feel that, that you want. Um, <clears throat> the types of financing, as I mentioned, we have the pre-built and we have the built assets. So the reason I separate them that way 
is because when you have a pre-built, um, let's say the developer is creating, is building this for you, you have a finished product at the end. You don't have to worry about constructions. You don't have to worry about permits. They give you your key, you're done. But you have to have a payment plan with the developer. It's cheaper, like maybe, I would calculate 20 to 30% cheaper to go into a pre-built project than a finished product. When it's finished, the price already went up. So even if you bought the, a, develop, a developer, uh, um, one second. Uh, when you buy a, a ready a ready to go asset, then you have to go to the bank and you have, or you have to use a private lender. We have some private lenders that um, that will allow Americans and Canadian citizens to buy in Mexico uh, based on their credit and their income of their country. So the only thing, the only key <laughs> keyword here is the interest rate. As soon as you step out of the US, the interest rates might be like double. But now with the interest so high in the US, it's almost equal because now we're at 9%, 9 to 14% interest. So you have to make sure that your client understands that to be able to, to get a loan, uh, but they have to start the process two or three months before they actually wanna buy, buy the, the house. So some people start with the pre-development and then they finish with a bank. So let's say if they can they don't have 200,000, then we have like 50,000 and they can put that for a down payment. Then they can use that. And when the project is finished and you have a title, then that's when you can get a loan on the, on the assets. So if you have any questions on financing, we're happy to share more info. I have some companies that we work with right now. Uh, one of them is Tucas Express, CBI is out of Puerto Vallarta, and Simon Con is a, a lender that lends above a million dollars. So I think this one is for a larger projects or commercial. These first two are for residential. And these are the amounts, the minimum amounts. This is what I just explained a little bit uh, earlier. You know, the process on how you buy property, this is very general. It doesn't apply to everything, but it's maybe 80% of all the developments and the purchases happen like this. You do your escrow, I'm sorry, your earnest money which will be called the enganche, that can be maybe $5,000. Doesn't have to be a percentage. You'll be like, hey, this is my interest. I would like to save this land, this project, this condo, this house, and I'm committing to this initial payment. Then we have um, the down payment, which some, in Mexico, it, it is high, it's about 30%, but we can negotiate that with the developer. So calculate at least 10 to 30% minimum but in Mexico, what they do is, you, of course, if you do a larger down payment, then you have sometimes a discount on the full price of the, of the house. <clears throat> and this will vary from developer to developer. It will vary from the seller to the seller. And as I mentioned, once you start your payment plan, like you, you do monthly, I did every six months. So whatever you agree with the seller, that's what it goes. Nobody tells you what to do or how to do it. You just have to make sure that you have an agreement in place. And then however you pay the, the remaining balance, Let's say my house was 200,000 and I wanna finance probably a hundred. So I made my payments up until a hundred and then the rest can be, they can insert a loan when they have a, a title. When the property has a title, then that's the time that you can get a loan, not before. Banks do not lend on pre-construction. So if the asset doesn't exist, the bank will not give you money, which makes sense, right? <laughs> they don't wanna finance air or land. <clears throat> uh, some legal terms to be aware of, and I'm going a little fast so we can finish and we can have some time for questions. Just the legal stuff behind uh, pre-construction. So first we have to make sure that the development that we, uh, we suggest to our clients is actually a developer that is trusted and is going to finish because there is a lot of cases that the client buys, I have a I have a friend now that he didn't buy with me, but he bought um, almost two, 2021. <clears throat> so two, three, two, almost three, two years ago, three years ago, his property was supposed to be finished September, 2022. <clears throat> there's no property right now. There's only the building. And he, right now we're February, 2024, and the building is still not finished. So we have to research, make sure that the, the developer is trusted because you're going to see a lot of um, 
for sale everywhere. Once you start, you know, Googling um, international real estate properties in Tulum, you're gonna get a lot of advertising about properties in Tulum. So not everything that shines is gold. Make sure we have to do that research because if you suggest a contractor that is not good, it has no good reputation, and that only is known when you're here, you're gonna get your client in trouble because it's gonna be like, they're gonna be delayed and the project won't be done in time. Sorry, uh, pre-sale. So make sure that you always do the research with the developer and then uh, that the developer is who they say they're gonna do, they own the land, they have the permits, only then we start commercializing. And this homework is done with our attorneys ahead of time because we don't have any client that giving down payment for a developer we don't know, or we, don't, we haven't seen, or it's the first time, because then you're gonna compromise your client's development and hence your license, because if you suggest this to your client that is in the US and they trust you and they trust us because of that, they're gonna come back to you because they're like, James, you, you told me this was a reliable place and yet they haven't finished for two years. So we, we have to, we have, this is a, the biggest part for us, research to make sure we offer the product that will be finished, sold, and the client will be happy. So it's an example for uh, research. Pre-research is super important. And during, of course, you need an attorney to hold your hand maybe during the process in case there's any issues, delays, negotiations. If your project is not done on time, then to make sure that that's um, uh, part of the contract or, or the client gets um, you know, compensated for any, any delays or, or breach of contract. We hold our hands as well during this part. Our legal team is pretty solid. And before we even put a listing into EXP, we make sure that they, they you know, you have to have a, a list of compliance that we follow because EXP is also very um, detail oriented on this. You know, we don't want to put anything online that is not trusted. Many companies do put, put anything online. So be mindful when you find things online that are not trusted or verify by at least the EXP team. And it's, only, it's not only us, it's the EXP uh, compliance team in Mexico. Post sale. So once you get your, your house built, it's ready to go, you get the keys. Then um, the, the, when they give you the keys, it's not necessarily the time that you'll get your title. So there's a, a little disconnection on time because sometimes when they deliver the house, they're still organizing the, let's, let's say the condo association, the structure, you know, they divide everything that is within the, the, the development. And only then they're gonna give you your title. Sometimes when you get the keys and when you get your title, might be one year apart. Less sometimes, hopefully, but sometimes more. So many clients are like, hey, Natalie, um, if they didn't buy with me, I cannot, I cannot reply for every you know, um, developer or any realtor that has sold them the place, but we can help them negotiate the post sale. Let's say they already bought with somebody else and they're having trouble. They don't know what happened. They don't have any updates on the development. So we'll be there because we're here you know, on the ground doing the research and we can check with our group because everything happens here within WhatsApp groups. If you're in the WhatsApp groups, you have the news. If you're outside the WhatsApp groups, we have no idea what's happening in any location. So if I have a, an issue, I'll go to my to our attorney and be like, Miriam, do you know what happened here? Like what's a, you know, what's the status of the developer? What why are they not delivering? So then they she'll find out and check every single detail on the why this is not being delivered. So make sure that the client expectations are managed. We get guided through these steps. We sometimes at the beginning we didn't know this ourselves. When we bought our place. We were uh, we bought a condo near Playa del Carmen. We didn't get the title even uh, maybe it was 14 months later. So we were anxious. We we're like, where's the title? And they're like, well, it's part of the process. You just need to follow the process. And I didn't know the process because my realtor didn't explain to me what to expect. So then the client, I, me as a client, I was in, in the blind. I didn't know. So then after I went through the process myself and we went through the fire, we we're like, okay, so this is how it works and it's normal. So now we tell our clients expectations ahead of time to make sure they don't expect the kids and the title at the same time if that's not, not real, if that's not realistic we make sure they at least they know ahead of time so all these little things that frustrate american buyers mostly and canadian buyers because in the u.s we do things certain way and here we have to you know push the brakes and adapt but then there that we're recording every single process to make sure that this is um the client knows ahead of time at least so this is part of the legal stuff in Mexico. So there's a myth that uh, if you're American or you're Canadian, you cannot buy in Mexico. And that's not true. 
you can. I, I was able to. And there's a, an extra layer of legality, which is called fideicomiso. The fideicomiso is a trust. And all, all it is is like your, your representative is going to be the bank in front of the government. And this is just an extra permit that we are required to, to obtain just because um, if you buy within 50 kilometers from uh, the country border, let's say US or Guatemala, if it's 50 kilometers uh, or from the water, from the beaches, usually every beach town will have this requirement. You will require or your client will require a fideicomiso. And all it is is just an extra layer for legality. So this gets renewed every 50 years, five zero. And if your client is in a beach town, they will fall under this law. Like you have to have a fideicomiso. If you're not a Mexican citizen, you cannot uh, skip this step. So this is an extra step is yes, that the government has this in place. And the only reason is that because of, um, you know, when US and then, you know, the countries were getting informed and in invaded, they had to put a, a motion into place that they can control the borders. Let's say if US does a base near the border and they, they buy land in a, near the border, Mexico wants to make sure they can withdraw that power because if it's like something to invade or to take more land, they want to protect that. That's their way of protecting it. So for Mexico, this is just an extra layer of protection only in the borders. If you buy in Mexico City in the middle of the country, there's no water, there's no border, you're fine. You don't need this. But this is not that expensive either. Like to set it up is like maybe $2,500. Uh, one time fee, and that's the setup of the trust. And then yearly is maybe anywhere from five to eight, depending on the mm -hmm. bank that you use. And that's a yearly that I will call it my, my tax, my property tax. I just kind of roll it in. It's not a property tax, but I, I kind of like imply that as a fixed cost for the year. This is the only extra fee that you have to pay as a buyer if you are in the beach town or if you're next to the border. Um, there are different types of fee commission, and there's a whole different conversation we can have. And we have an attorney that she can help us with a whole class about this if you guys are into it. Uh, there's some banks here that, that they have used it. And this is, uh, well, my numbers are a little cramped here, but just so you know, why am I here? <laughs> it's because of the property taxes. This is an example. So we did this uh, run with a uh, with accountant and the attorney. And what we, when I when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, I need to buy my more property here. So for an example, we're, we have a property of 1,700 square feet. That's the size. The area is Tulum area, which is the most expensive area in Mexico. Uh, the price, listing price, let's call it 155 USD, 155,000. These are real prices. Uh, and in pesos is below. So for 1,700 square feet, you're gonna pay maybe about anywhere from 150 to 250, depending on where you're located exactly. And for that, uh, your property taxes is going to be um, $352 per year. So this amount is not per month, it's per year. So imagine the savings of property taxes for a property value you know, at this. I don't know how much is in Denver or in Vegas, but in Chicago, I pay $7,000 for my condo. <laughs> and my condo is 1,300 square feet. 350 uh, was or is USD. And my taxes right now, they went up about 30% because I guess the Illinois ran out of cash <laughs> and then they want to tax the property owners. So my taxes in the US are $7,000 for 1,300 square feet, uh, value of 350K USD. Uh, so if I buy something similar here, let's say it's 3X the price, so it's three or four X the taxes, but I don't think I'm gonna go above a thousand per year on property taxes only. So um, same thing, when I, I pay my, my property taxes this year for my condo near Playa del Carmen, it was uh, I think $262 for the six months. So maybe I'm at 600 per year, but this is a gay community, it's next to the water, it's walking distance to a resort, and it's a, it has like a beautiful entrance. So this is kind of like the high end of what you're gonna find here and these are your property taxes. So it's an example, but just so you know why people are retiring here. This, the same thing in Florida will be, I don't know if there's anybody here from Florida, I think uh, Marilyn is in Tampa maybe, but she can share at the end maybe like, you know, what will be the numbers here for owners. And I don't think we're in the under a thousand. <laughs> 
yet. But this is a real case study. We have a, you know, we just kind of put some numbers in here. I can share even the copy of my property taxes of this year with you guys in the WhatsApp group, but that's all I pay. That's it. And there's no tricks, there's nothing hiding. Only the Fidelity Commission you have to keep in mind that's a fixed cost, but the property taxes are this much. Um, <clears throat> just to wrap up on the construction, why cenotes are so important in this area? People will sell you the moon and the stars and everything is beautiful. And when you start buying land, if it's protected land, you will not be able to, to build anything. Maybe a, a grill, a palapa, or what they, they call it like a, something like it's temporary. Maybe a, maybe like a one of those a mobile homes, but that's it. So you have to be super careful when clients buy land because there's protected land. And in that area in the jungle, and if it's protected, you cannot build nothing. On number two, cenotes are um, underground caves. So if you buy a land that has shallow depth, which I'll explain a little bit more, the depth of the land is so important here. And the reason I explained at the beginning why cenotes are important is because the geography is going to be important. And when you build, if you build uh, on top of a, a land that is very dense, you can build a higher building. But if you build in, a, you know, in something that has a cenote underneath, you cannot build too much because the weight will collapse the land. So these studies are done with the topographers, uh, with the, you know, the architects, the engineers. So before people go crazy buying land for maybe $10,000, we have to do the homework to make sure you can build something in there if that's what you want to do. If you want to have land to have trees grow, awesome. <laughs> but if you want to build a house, you know, it's a different story. So we have to make sure that the density of the land that you're buying uh, or your client is buying is appropriate. And we have to study this because we hear, hear horror stories all the time, of course. And then good stories too, you know, I bought this land for 30,000 and now it's worth, you know, triple. But we have to be super mindful of the geography of this area. Yucatan, Cancun, Tulum, all this applies for them, for us here. Uh, and this is super important to keep in mind. So the architect will be, is our right hand. We have a, like three architects that are our best friends <laughs> because right now at this point, we talk to them every single day. Hey, do you know all these? Can you help us with that? So we're always like in contact with that about uh, specifics. So make sure that you keep the zoning in mind uh, the area that can be built, you cannot build in 100% worth of the land, of course, like in the US either. You have to leave some space for green and there's a percentage too, depending on where you're building. If you're building in a gated community, they'll give you those guidelines. If you're building, if it's just outside in you know open land, uh, then you have less restrictions, but at the same time, uh, you're kind of on your own over there. So just keep that in mind for when you're talking about listings right like where it's located how high it's going to be um you know what what zoning is that can i put a store downstairs because you can but it depends where you buy or where the client buy so okay i bought land and now what happens how how much is construction we run this by the architect and these are the lowest numbers so this is only from here and up and when we call it obra negra is construction just a skeleton and here and compared to the US, we built uh, in concrete <laughs> because otherwise siding and all that, you know, with a hurricane, it's gone. Florida is gone when the air blows. So the insurance, you know, is super expensive in Florida, but here everything is concrete. <clears throat> so it's like the three little piggies, right? Like which house is gonna last longer? <laughs> in this case, this is hurricane proof. <clears throat> but just to share with you the, the costs, okay, let's talk about numbers. Since everybody here is in real estate, you wanna know how much it's going to be to build a house for you, for your client, you know, just to start the conversation. Hey, do you know that if you wanna build a house in Mexico, you can only, you know, you can spend 120,000 for about 1,100 square feet. So then they will understand the ratio, right? Like how big you want your house, that's depend on how much it's gonna cost you. If I want a 5,000 square feet house, then of course that's more. Um, then we have the, legal, you know, but the, the, the engineer and the architect will do all this ho homework for you. We have all the permits and everything, everything that is here, but it's an average <clears throat> of how much it costs to build as you see it in the picture. Of course, if you want windows, if you want floors, if you want marble, if you want, you know, like high end, then you just keep adding on top of that. But this is just a skeleton and this is right now the current prices and this is the lowest I found so far because that can go up to 2,000 easily. And I'm talking about square feet here and square meters here, and that's the price per square. Um, 
feet built. So just in case you want to do the math and see how big you want the construction. These are just some of the numbers. So we, we have found that for maybe 120,000 plus the land cost, you can build something that is, you know, a three, four bedroom house, depending on how big you want it. And you will be probably, if it's custom made, you know, whatever you want to do, you will be at this a price. Um, we have listings right now in Merida that are a three bedroom house, two bath, two floors, uh, ACs, 160,000. Three bedroom, two bath, 160,000, walking distance to the beach. So we have those listings right now, ready to go. They're built already. So they have maybe less uh, wiggle room to, to pay. But if some client that has, you know, they're ready to sell in the US and buy in Mexico, this 160,000 is nothing, you know, compared to the house that they might sell uh, later on. Uh, let's finish super fast and, and we can go to questions at the end, Lorena, if you like. Um, but I'm going back to the slides. Really, the historians is super important for us to know because uh, like in the US, you can just plug into the, to the water. Here, everything is underground water. So we have unlimited source of water, which is awesome. But at the same time, there's a system that needs to be in place to have the water system and the sewer system. But this is eco-friendly as well, because you know each place will have its own um, source of water container of water, and then you can also plug into the regular water that the city provides if you're in a populated area. If you're in the middle of nowhere in the jungle, then there's a setup that they can do, but they are self-sustainable and you can operate within your own house limits. So this is what I like because you can set up shop anywhere you want uh, based on how much you like nature. If you wanna be next to the city, then you're fine because this will be like, just, you plug into the city and you're fine for construction purposes, but just make sure you remember the word biodigestores or septic tanks for, um, Mexico, Yucatan Peninsula, because um, the ground is really hard to go through pipe with pipes everywhere. But then there's a system that it works right now. That is what, how it's being done. This is just the prices in USD and pesos, in case you're curious. And just to wrap it up, let's talk about some risks. And this is uh, some risk I encounter myself. So this is from experience. Um, this There is no MLS in um, in Mexico. So we have fractionated databases. The reason that I joined EXP is because I wanted to uh, have a way to bring clients here so they understand, they can see our listings online, but then they see good listings, not just whatever you find online. You can type properties in Playa del Carmen and you get a lot of it. I can guarantee you that at least 80% of that will be crap. Like you should not trust it. 20% will be good. But then you have to sort out through the 20% that are good. And if you don't know the market and if you're not here and if you haven't seen or visited the areas, you might um, end up with something that, you know, is not fully trusted. So the reason that we're doing this call is because we want to make sure that we can work together on the trust. Same with other countries. Um, no matter where you are, Colombia has the same issue. Uh, Spain has, has more structure. Um, Dubai is more structure. India is like Mexico. Like, you know, there's things everywhere, but no, no fully organized. So that's why EXP is so important because once you put everything in the platform is because we vetted it. Uh, it's not a regulated industry. So anybody can wake up and be a realtor. <laughs> so you have to be super mindful of who you talk to online or who your clients talk to online. Because if your client is like, hey, I want to buy a property in Mexico and they start with a, inter, uh, a realtor in online, that client is at risk because there is no license requirements here. Anybody can be a realtor. So many people come and go from the industry, but at least like in Chicago, I think my MLS is like maybe $1,400 a year. And my license, I have to you know follow certain guidelines and rules and regulations for me to keep my license. Here, there's not a fear or worry. So anybody can be like, hey, I'll be a realtor. And if they don't know enough about the development, the land or the law, the client will be at risk. So make sure that they, they you, know, you know that anybody can be a realtor here. So that's why you have to be super mindful of who you refer, even with the EXP network, some people come and go too. So we don't know, we try to trust them, we work with them, we, we meet them in person. I travel through Mexico to make sure at least I meet agents in person. So now we have a database of people we met in person, we know how they work, we know, you know if they're bilingual, one language or how many languages they speak. And that's the effort we've been doing because we wanna promote more of the international real estate within EXP. Uh, there's no tech, so don't expect putting a pin number online and getting all the history of the property. That's not going to happen too often. You need an attorney to do that. They need to go to the city and they need to go and do the homework. So 
uh, Yucatán, though, Yucatán, um, Merida, is the only high-tech city in whole Mexico that has a, a platform, I mean, the one that you use the most, that you can actually put a, num a number, like it's called Numero Catastral, and you can find out more history about the property. But in Quintana Roo, Tulum, Cancun, Playa del Carmen, there's no organization like that because they like to just play like, um, yeah, it was fine, everything's cool, but that really gives more room for risk and fraud, unfortunately. There's some title issues, as I mentioned, that you, clients might end up buying more, the same property more than once because there's no way to verify who's the owner. Uh, but only if you go to the city in person or you have an attorney to represent the client, that we can find this out. So the client doesn't have to you know, make sure that nobody else owns it, there's no liens on the property or things like that. There's a ton of property scams. Not everything that shines is gold in the internet, of course, we know that. But here in Mexico, more than ever, it has to be super, super mindful on you know, what it is that is um, uh, real versus not real. Uh, Over-promising, under-delivering, I mean, that's common everywhere in the world, but here mainly, especially with some developers. Um, time is relative here. Mañana is mañana, or it can be three weeks. Mañana is, it can be like, you know, a month or one year. So time is relative. So it's not like, hey, it's going to be done in three months. That might be an understatement. But just once you get adapted to the culture, you'll be like, okay, I expect to be maybe two months. And then they, they tell you it's a week. Currency exchange fluctuations may ensure that you understand and know that the currency exchange will vary the amount of the price. So if you see prices in USD and the peso and the dollar are going like that, the price will vary in dollars. But that's why we always give the peso price because that will not change. But the dollar price will change because if the dollar is 20 to one, it's different than 16 to one. So then we have to be mindful when we give prices in dollars. So we might give you prices in pesos and tell you to calculate today's rate. But if we give you to you in dollars, we'll give you this price is for this week, but it depends on the dollar or how we change that price. Those that are from a different country, we're used to that. We calculated, you know, the, the conversion, but we will give you the price in pesos and we'll give you today's rate in dollars. Just make sure that, you know, that's the, the prices. Infrastructure. There are areas that have no water and electricity. Uh, those are the cheapest areas, of course. But at the same time, if your client wants something right now, we might suggest them getting closer to the city. Um, there, there are also landlock issues for land uh, that you need to keep in mind, especially because Mexico is a big place. Mexico is a big country, and not everything is um, online and ready to be searched. Uh, there are some agents that, because they have dual agency, they have the listing, they want you to buy their listings only, so they don't show you everything else. But they cannot show you everything else because there is no database and there is no MLS. So this is kind of goes together with the problem of no MLS. So what we try to do is just put as many listings that we have vetted online and have the client pick whatever is good for them, whatever fits their criteria. So the research process and the discovery process is much longer here than in, in the US. That's why some, you might send a lead today and it might close in a year or you might close in two years, like in the US, but we're trying to keep up with the CRMs to make sure that if they want and they have the intention to buy, we'll close them and you'll get your referral money to make sure that you know we follow the, the lifestyle and the cycle of the client. And then of course, cultural language differences and everything else that is here. Uh, this is a little bit on why I moved to Mexico. My main reason was my mom because she needs you know, care 24 seven. In the US, I was paying a lot of money for her to be home and I didn't want to send her to a nursing home. That's why my expenses were so high. I had to work triple to make you know enough to pay my caregiver, which they're very expensive. And um, here the lifestyle just flows. It's like chill, my mom is taken care of, the weather is nice. I don't have to worry too much about you know property taxes or fixed costs because life is just easier. And then there's still opportunity to grow. And I'll, you know, I'll share more about my story another day, but we're almost at time. Um, how can we collaborate and how you can maybe participate with us? So you can work as a referral agent. And this is the same for every country. Every country will present here, not only the theory, but also the opportunities for you or your clients. That they, if they want Dubai, we have Dubai. And then Dubai will be presenting. And then the same thing, you can collaborate with Dubai for referral. So you, either we're creating investment, uh, investing abroad content. So you feel free to share it. Our brand is Unicorn Properties, but you know, our, it's our family, EXP is a family. So you can reshare everything that we post. Uh, if you want to start creating content with us, we are welcome to do that too. This is our YouTube channel. 
Um, and then uh, interviews as well. If you have anybody in Mexico that you want to maybe on board, help, convince, you know, so they're not alone, we're able to help the onboarding process. I'm, I was meeting last week with uh, one of the agents from uh, um, Sandy's, Sandy's, uh, Vanessa's downline. She's like my cousin in EXP, right? Because we have the same mom, Vanessa. <laughs> but uh, I was doing a meeting for Sandy so she can onboard an agent in Playa del Carmen. And why? Because I want the network to grow. And if she has a, an agent that has a surplus of clients, I have other agents that can take the surplus. So then that's the idea, you know, collaboration, onboarding, making sure the people who join EXP are actually ethical. Because once you step out of, you know, <laughs> your license, you, you don't promise ethical behavior, unless the person is like, you know, like you can feel them and then you're like, okay, this person we can work together with. So uh, if I can help you onboard anybody within Mexico, I'm happy to do that. Uh, a three-way call. I know the market very well and how EXP works here and how also what are the, the, the gaps as well, because we're creating content and, you know, systems for the gaps because we want to just go faster. So then uh, you can share our content as well. And this is how you can find me. This is my WhatsApp directly. But if you guys are in the group, you already have this and these are our channels. So all the information that we'll be sharing will be mostly to, to promote right now the market we're in. But my goal is to promote every single market EXP is in. And that's why I want to have one day of theory, one day of practice, and every two weeks we switch countries. So at least everybody gets the content and you get an idea on how to refer. So if you hear a client that is like, hey, I want to buy, I want Spain, I want Portugal, I want South Africa, then you're like, I got somebody for you. So that's the whole idea with this, having um, the network. Um, and that's it. I think I'll stop sharing and recording.